So another whiteboard video following up with Whiteboard Wednesday. What's going on team? It's Ricky with Tackled Solutions here with another video. And have you ever wondered why some days just perform better than others? And in this video, I'm gonna be doing a complete breakdown on the whiteboard and make sure that if you would like to see future videos on the whiteboard, all you have to do is smash that like button and see if we can actually get to 4,000 likes. Also, if you prefer the way that I was previously doing when I was sharing my screen, just make sure you comment that down below. But altogether, I really hope that this video just gets you one step closer to your overall day trading goals. Let's go. All right, so let's go ahead and get right to it. So today I closed a little bit over $600 profit. And yes, I agree, based off of my previous performance and the dollar amount that I'm trading with, uh, I didn't perform exceptionally well. And regardless if I ended it green or red, what I wanted to cover today is when to identify when to stop trading right as day traders it is our job so to make a full understanding of when do we take advantage of an opportunity as a day trader we wake up every single day with the idea in mind that we stay patient and we wait for an opportunity to present itself so the key focus is waiting for an opportunity to trade. Trust me, I understand that when you're just getting started, it's very exciting to be able to take advantage of a series of different opportunities and over trading is a very common mistake that a lot of us make and I am no exception. It's something that still happens from time to time. But again, one of the things that I've learned over time is sometimes it's best to focus on quality trades rather than focusing on quantity. So what I wanted to break down in this video is exactly what happened today, but on a whiteboard. So again, hopefully you learned something new. So what I wanted to break down is I traded DGAS today. And like many of you guys saw, DGAS right around 9.30 to about 10.30 a.m. And again, this is Mountain Standard Time for those that are in Arizona. Uh, this was about three hours after the market opened. And one of the things that we begin to see is right around $290 for ticker symbol DGAS, it began to find a resistance level. I knew that natural gas was bearish, it was selling off, and this is why when natural gas sells off, I was paying attention to DGAS. If you tuned into the Learn Plan Profit live trading session, you would have seen that I took a couple trades on DGAS, especially right before the natural gas support. So I was up about $400, I had an amazing time, but one of the things that I later began to notice is there was a lot of consolidation. DGAS was not aggressively pushing up, it was not making higher highs, but it was very overbought on the day and not just necessarily on the day, but based off of yesterday's performance, it also was overextended. So because natural gas was so oversold, I understand that it can continue to sell off with the idea that DGAS, which is the inverse right, of UGAS, does have the potential to pull back and pull back quite a bit. So I wanted to be more cautious and what I decided to do was I decided to stop trading and I announced that to our Learn Plan Profit Group. But I want you to understand the thought process behind that. And this is exactly what I have down here. So this breaks down $290, which is where I saw a very common resistance level. I know that DGAS ended up hitting highs of 293 or 294, I'm not too sure. But the whole idea that I wanna share with you is it was so overbought that yes, I understood that it could continue to uptrend with the idea that it's so overbought that it has more downside potential than it does upside. So because of that, I wanted to be more selective, especially since I already exceeded my overall trading goal. And what I wanted to break down for you guys is, yes, I knew that there was upside potential because natural gas was bearish but just as much as there was a higher form of risk involved, which is what I have broken down for you guys. So as DGAS pushed up and then it hits that $290 resistance level, you see that it's continuously hitting that same resistance level. And yes, it does have the upside potential to continue to uptrend as anything does, but with the idea that if it continues to hit the same resistance over and over again, it's just validating that that is a very strong price point that it's struggling to break above, which again, is just showing signs of a strong resistance level, which means that it might end up getting rejected. So with that idea in mind, when something is consolidating and not breaking above a certain price point, this is when I have to begin to ask myself the question, is it worth as something was already uptrending and as something has already shown signs of a resistance level and with something that's already overbought, is it worth to continue to hold the position on DGAS when it's already overbought on the day, when it's shown signs of resistance, just because it previously was uptrending. And what I ended up doing was I closed out my position. And later throughout the day, 
It ended up playing out almost like expected where it could have gone either way. At the end of the day, nothing has to happen every single day. It is just our job to make sure that we take advantage of opportunities that make sense and to walk away when it just doesn't meet our criteria. And that's essentially what happened today, but I want you to understand why. Because it came from a price point of around 275, this is why I have this as the overall lows. So as it began to uptrend, again, we were hitting that same resistance level. Yes, I understood that there was upside with the idea that it does have that downside potential. And again, this upside margin is not as great as this downside risk. And what ended up happening is, if I'm not mistaken, Diaz ended up selling right back off down to 275, which ended up coming right back down to the previous support level of 275. And what I wanted to break down for you guys was this exactly. So when there's consolidation, just like we saw right on over here, there's unclear direction, which comes at a greater form of risk. Do you all agree? Second thing is with a lower upside margin and a higher downside margin that comes at a greater form of risk. And then the third thing is, one of the main reasons that I decided to hold back from re-entering DGAS is one thing that we all have to understand is that every single time, regardless if you're investing or regardless if you're taking a trade, every single time that you enter a position, regardless of how safe or how bullish it is, it always comes at some form of risk. So by having an open position, I need to understand that I'm putting myself in a position where there is some form of risk involved. So instead of doing that, especially when I've already seen a couple signs of, hey, it's overbought, it's overextended, and it's showing signs of a resistance level, and it has a lot of downside potential, it made sense to me to hold back from re-entering DGAS, which of course ended up paying off. Uh, I did not end up taking a position on you guys. I just, again, when direction was overall unclear, I would rather just set my alerts and then maybe follow up with it when it makes sense. And then one of the final statements that I wanted to share here is that opportunity is not on your schedule. And what I mean by that is people love to ask the question, you know, hey Ricky, can I trade or is it the best time to trade at during pre-market session or during market open or during normal trading hours or during after market hours? One of the things that you have to understand is regardless of your niche, you know, I have a big focus on natural gas, but if you focus on tech, if you focus on cannabis, if you focus on bioscience, regardless of what it is you know if there's news if there's demand if there's anything any form of catalyst that is released that can cause a positive or negative catalyst to what it is that you are trading that is not on a set schedule yes there are certain times that stocks are a little bit more volatile but at the end of the day one of the things that you have to get through your head is that opportunity is not on your schedule it is your job as a day trader to seek opportunity it does not come every single day and one of the things that you truly have to understand is sometimes one of the best trades that you can take is not taking one at all and just setting your alerts and following up with it when it actually makes sense rather than trying to convince yourself to make sense of that trade and that's exactly what we have for you guys right here and one of the last things that i wanted to talk about is well how is it that I can create this formula or this strategy to be a little bit more structured. Because that's all it is. You know, I think one of the main reasons that people lack in entrepreneurship and starting their own business and even in trading in the stock market is when you have a nine to five job, when you have, you know, a job that you go to, there are a series of rules that you must abide by. And if you do not, there are consequences. You could either get fired or you get written up. When it comes down to trading, it's so accessible, anyone can do it. And no one's making you do anything. You have the freedom to do anything. And with that freedom, like we've said before, with great opportunity comes great responsibility. And one of the biggest areas of opportunity is structure and discipline. So as you're learning how to do anything in, in e-commerce, right? With business, with trading, you need to make sure that you begin to implement structure on the do's and the don'ts based off of your experience and it is up to you to hold yourself accountable. And that is exactly what I wanted to share with you guys right on over here. This is just an example. You guys don't have to follow this. This is just a concept, but you know, the three to one ratio or the five to one ratio. And again, clearly stating that this is something that we call within our learn plan profit group, golden ratios. And it's just a ratio that you come up with that you hold yourself accountable to the overall idea that every single time that you either choose to take a trade, a swing trade, a day trade, or you choose to invest, then it needs to meet your criteria. Like we've said before, every trade or every investment comes at some form of risk. It is your job to simply manage it and to only take the ones that you see value. So by having your own version of your golden ratio, 
of making sure the upside percentage always outweighs the downside, the risk. You need to make sure that you come up with the ratio that is feasible and that makes sense to you. The ones up here, you do not need to copy. And the final thoughts that I wanted to share with you guys today are a very common mistake that I made when I was you know, just getting started is the overall idea of chasing the next big number. And what I mean by that is how many of you when you're you know, just getting started and maybe if your account is at $1,000 or $2,000 and you're doing well on the day and you're about to approach $50 profit right for the day or your first time ever almost hitting $100 profit, you're like at $95 and the reason you have not sold your open position and again, if this is you, make sure you comment that down below. How many times have you been in an open position? You're at $95 but you're not selling because you're trying to hit and break $100 or because you're at $900 profit, but you don't sell because you wanna hit $1,000. It happens, it's, we get greedy sometimes, and the, very, the easiest way that I can make this super clear for you guys is the dollar amount that you are up or down should never determine when you plan to sell. You and your dollar amount, your profit, your P&L, your loss, is completely irrelevant to when a stock hits a resistance level or a support level. You need to get that through your head. Another thing is, if that doesn't make sense to you, then I wanna make sure that you understand that a couple extra dollars today is not gonna matter five or 10 years from now. So do something today that your future self will thank you for. And instead of trying to maximize every single trade, focus on being consistent. And if you're someone that's learning how to trade, then again, focus on learning and not so much on trying to make money. The second part is chasing a goal. Again, if you have $500, that is your daily goal, $100, $50, even just to stay profitable. Again, a goal is something to work towards, not something that you necessarily have to hit every single day. And this is just something that you have to accept. In the stock market, loss is inevitable. It is your job as a day trader to make sure that you manage it, plain and simple. And the last thing is, chasing an opportunity. If you see, there is a similarity between all the mistakes that I've made and it all has to do with chasing, is when I'm chasing an opportunity is I'm forcing the trade, right? I'm over trading. I'm trying to see a pattern that's not even really there just because maybe I'm trying to, again, either chase a goal or chase a dollar value. And these are mistakes that we've all made, myself included. And that's fine as long as we learn from our mistakes and do our part in not being a perfect trader, but again, working towards being as close to perfect as possible. And what that means is instead of chasing a trade and still entering a trade when you know that there's obvious indication of a resistance and that it's overbought, that you do your part that instead of chasing, that you truly allow an opportunity to present itself. And you can simply do that by setting your alerts and following up with it when it makes sense that simple. So again, I really do appreciate your guys' time. Let me know in the comment section if anything that I covered today is something that you've experienced or if you learned something new as well. Let me know what you guys would like me to break down for next week's Whiteboard Wednesday and I would love to follow up with another video. Again, don't forget to stay connected. We run the largest YouTube channel and of course the largest Facebook group in the world for those who day trade in the stock market and that's going to be that first link down below. Also, tomorrow's Friday, we're approaching the weekend and it's the perfect time to utilize the extra time to learn how to trade. So if you like the way that I break things down and you think that you can benefit from being able to watch me trade live every single day, I do and only work with the Learn Plan Profit Group. That's that second link. So if you would like to learn more about it and to see if it's a good fit for you, click the second link, take two minutes and see if what we have to offer would be a value for you. Again, I hope that you guys smash that like button. Make sure you share this video with someone that you think can benefit from it. And like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take it easy, team.